information shared on the following program is for general information purposes only. It does not constitute legal, tax, investment, or other advice, nor is it intended to recommend any particular investments, products, or financial instruments. Always seek advice from your financial advisor, attorney, or accountant with regard to investment, legal, or tax questions. Welcome to the only show in the country dedicated to helping savers worry less about money, the Worry-Free Retirement, with your host, nationally recognized retirement specialist and four-time author, Tony Walker. Over the past 37 years of helping thousands of savers worry less about money, the three truisms about savers and money and how the two mesh together to form a worry-free retirement comes down to this. You ready? I want to write this down. Here goes. Use, flexibility, and control. That's it. Of all the many different financial products one might choose from, of the thousands of financial advisors you might consider working with, of all the many know-it-all financial entertainers on the radio, TV, and the internet barking out one-size-fits-all advice on a whole host of financial matters, here's what this little man in the sweater vest has learned over the past 37 years in how to best help savers be worry-free. If you, as a saver, do not invest in financial products that provide maximum use of your money, you will worry. If you, as a saver, do not have in place a written game plan that includes flexibility, to meet the changes that will surely come your way, you will worry. And finally, assuming you are a saver and you don't feel in control of your money in your future, yep, guess what? You're going to worry. So how do we at Tony Walker Financial help so many savers worry less about money? With products? Yes. But more importantly, and this is what you are probably missing, we do this with a process. One that includes a wonderful staff to service that process, not just at the time of the sale, but long into your financial future. So when I return, I'll be joined again by two folks from our Bowling Green offices, fellow fiduciary, Ms. Heather Hughes, and our tax certified specialist, Ms. Leanne Tinsley, to discuss how our team of service experts can help you be worry-free in retirement. Good stuff coming your way. We'll be right back. Have you recently retired, been laid off, or offered a pension buyout? Has the company you work for moved, been acquired, or closed its doors forever? And finally, do you have a 401k with a previous employer you'd like to move to safer territory? Then take advantage of this opportunity to move your 401k or lump sum pension to Tony Walker Financial. Let's meet in person to discuss your retirement options. Log on now to TonyWalkerFinancial.com to schedule your free, no obligation appointment. Let us help you today. Welcome back to the Worry-Free Retirement, and this is kind of part two. We didn't mean to make the show this long last week, but it worked out great because with us in the studio, as we record part two of our series on what to tell your kids when you die, is fellow fiduciary out of Bowling Green, Miss Heather Hughes. First of all, thanks for sticking around for show number two. You didn't know I was going to rope you into this, did you? was not disclosed, <laughs> but I'm happy to be here. And of course... Miss Leanne Tinsley, Certified Tax Specialist at Tony Walker Financial. Thank you again for hanging around and joining us, Leanne. You're welcome, Tony. All right. So in case you missed last week's episode, by the way, you can watch uh, previous episodes of the Worry-Free Retirement. Just go to youtube.com, youtube.com, type in Tony Walker Financial, and you can watch all the past episodes. You might want to do that for this one, though, because it really sets the stage well, as Leanne and Heather are doing a great job explaining all the written game plans, all the tax planning we do for our clients. So real quickly, we'll summarize this one. We touched on this briefly. To, in case you're just joining us, again, what we're imagining is somebody is an elderly couple. The one spouse has been deceased for years. The other spouse passes away and has this $600,000 tax-infested IRA that they're going to leave in equal shares to three children. All right, that's the setup. So the first scenario we covered last week briefly, the $200,000, this person wanted to pay off a mortgage and then there was a lot of taxes in there 
But Leanne, you had something to say about that uh, in terms of what you could do maybe to defuse some of those taxes in this example, paying off the house. One option in this example is that we could spread that out over two tax years. Let's say we take a distribution in de December and one in January. So you're only talking about half of the tax liability in each of those tax years. That would probably get rid of that net investment tax as well. So you Good would be point. saving uh, significantly there. And we haven't touched on the SECURE Act. You know, you used to be able to spread that tax over your lifetime under the RMDs for inherited IRAs. But in some ways, I guess it does give you a little bit of flexibility with this because you don't have to take it all out until 10 years, correct? That is correct. With the new SECURE Act rules, any uh, death after 2020, those all have to be distributed within 10 years. And then Heather, as a fiduciary and planner, I know you and I, we, we kind of go back and forth on this sometimes, but especially paying off the house, kind of speak to the fact that maybe an investor might look at this and go, well, why would you want to pay off the house? Why not take the 200000 and invest it? And, but what do a lot of times savers think about debt and mortgages, and especially with an inheritance, it's kind of found money. What do some of our clients tend to react to when they have this kind of windfall, if you will? Right, and a lot of times one of the major goals for savers is to be debt free when they are in retirement or when they're approaching retirement. And so the, having that burden of the mortgage can kind of weigh heavy on them. So we see this a lot um, in terms of one of their goals is to pay off the mortgage, you know, pretty soon or quickly. And as Leanne mentioned, you know, a lot of times we may split that goal out over a couple of years or maybe even three years mm -hmm. to minimize the taxes on that. So very good. It's a good idea. And, you know, if it gives them peace at night and that's something that they feel accomplished for, then it's important. Mm -hmm. I agree. And, uh, you know, even though that's a lot of taxes, as we talked about last week, I mean, the tax rates could go up in the future. You never know. We're going to exactly. get into some scenarios here where this is a biggie uh, issue. So, again, that was the first child. And, again, we're just kind of making this up, but we intentionally chose three different children with three different situations because we see that a lot, don't we? Not everybody's situations are exactly alike. Exactly. So let's go to uh, scenario two, Derek. Same thing. This is the second child. Now, this child's a little older, age 48, little different circumstances. This child is single, only makes about $60,000 a year. And let's stop right there. Obviously, if they're single making $60,000 a year, there's a good chance this money is going to come in handy. So in this example, this person didn't want to take a lump sum, didn't have a mortgage and all that stuff, but needed supplemental income. So let's kind of see what happens. So in, the, in our example here, now the 5%, obviously that's an assumed rate, but we imagine that the person doesn't want to take the money. Maybe they put it with our Charles Schwab platform and we get 5% on the money. And what would that income be there, Derek? Yeah, so that means we would send an annual income in this example of 24,000 and some change. So Leanne, if you would, let's go over the taxes here and what's happening on this and describe the different taxes. Well, the federal tax uh, on that additional income, that's gonna raise their tax, federal taxes to 5427 as and you that's see every on the year, board. Right? That's each year in state tax at 135. So there's your total tax for that year and then a reminder that that has to be fully distributed within 10 years. Okay. And that's why in this example we imagine we paid it down in 10 years. So the net proceeds, I guess that's what a lot of people forget. You know, you're thinking, "Oh, 24 to 25,000 a year, that's not all the money, and as we'll see in this next scenario we're going to cover, it could even be much higher. Any thoughts on this right here, uh, Heather or Leanne? Well, that's the, you know, the 10-year <laughs> rule, as Leanne mentioned, was from the SECURE Act. Before you could stretch an IRA, so you would basically take required minimum distributions throughout your lifetime, it would minimize the tax burden, and that's why the IRS has kind of closed that gap so they can receive the tax money ahead, you know, sooner. So. And that, we talk about that in the office a lot. Don't you think, I mean, we're not trying to be prognosticators here and we don't know what the politicians will do, but to me, they're kind of showing their hand a little bit. I mean, to all of a sudden change and make beneficiaries take it out in 10 years tells me they want that tax revenue. They know they're going to get it. Would you agree? Oh, absolutely. Well, I mean, you're looking at what a 48 year old, theoretically, you've got another 30 years for the IRS to wait on that. Those That's tax true. Funds. That's true. Okay, now this is an interesting one. Scenario three, Derek, let's put that up. This is the third child, happens to be age 50, married. Now, what, whatever, we won't say what profession this is, but let's just imagine this person is working, making a half million dollars a year. <clears throat> Excuse me, Aaron, let's put up that tax bracket uh, for them to see. Notice this 
uh, based on this 500,000, this person under current tax law is already paying 32% federal bracket. Okay, thank you, Aaron. So back to this, so riddle me this, Heather. Do you think, okay, let's kind of keep going here, Derek. They plan to retire at age 60, all right? And they get 200,000, let's stop there. Do you think this person's gonna be excited about taking 200,000 out right now? No, probably a burden. <laughs> yeah, in other words, th think what's happening. This $200,000 for this person, they're already in a 37% bracket, and then the NIT, right, Leanne, they're gonna have an extra tax, then the state tax. I mean, this would be a disaster to pull out this money, probably close to 50%, wouldn't you agree? Probably close to it. So this person, under the new law, they don't have to take anything out for 10 years, correct? Okay, so what we did, they put it with us, with Charles Schwab, we were imagining 5%. Now we wait 10 years. Okay, let's stop right there, Derek. So look at these taxes though. Now this is what hits people when they have large lump sums and try to take them out for whatever. Let's go over these taxes, uh, Leanne. So again, we're in the 10th year, so he knows he has to fully distribute this amount at 325. So the federal tax on that's going to be 59,641. He's got an NIT kicking in of 2,880. State tax is going to be 14,733 for a total tax of 77,254. And that and the net proceeds of 248, but what's kind of interesting, and inflation's kind of working against this too. We haven't thought about that in 10 years, the future value of this money, plus if this person with, with a money manager other than us charging them one and a half or 2% or whatever some of these people are charging, I mean, that net proceeds, when you really factor in inflation and fees, could even be a lot less. Mm -hmm. So folks, here's the thing. When we come back, I'm gonna cover what can happen if we don't do any planning, what a written game plan will provide you, what does the RMD mean? Why would you want to consider Roth conversions? We're going to cover all of that in the next segment with Heather and Leanne. Y'all stick around. One more segment, I promise. Stay tuned. You're watching The Worry-Free Retirement. I'll be right back. can you trust? It's one of the most important decisions you'll have to make. Question is, are you ready? Well, we're here to help at Tony Walker Financial. You know, we care more about you than we do your money, and we have over 2,000 happy clients and an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau to prove it. Rolling over a 401k, confused about Social Security, maybe you're afraid of running out of money. Learn how to use and enjoy and protect your hard-earned money. Log on now to TonyWalkerFinancial.com and let's get started. Whether you're a longtime viewer of the Worry-Free Retirement or just catching us for the first time, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to catch all of our latest educational content and previous shows of the Worry-Free Retirement. Also, don't forget about our blog page at TonyWalkerFinancial.com. You know, I've made it my mission to help savers worry less about money, and we want to help you too. Let us know how we can help by logging on to TonyWalkerFinancial.com. Welcome back to the Worry-Free Retirement. We're glad you've joined us. And again, in the studio with us is fellow fiduciary Heather Hughes. Thanks again for joining us. You're welcome. And Ms. Leanne Tinsley, our tax certified specialist in Bowling Green. Once again, thank you all for coming down. So, I, you know, the, the theme has been written game plans, writing things down, trying to remember it. We were talking about making sure kids, you know, spouses know where everything is located, how important that is. And I, I want to kind of digress a little bit just to set the stage. Um, did you ever meet my father-in-law, Bill Moore? No. You did not. Did you? Let's put up a picture of me and Mr. Moore there. Now, this was taken years ago. Leanne, did you meet Mr. Moore? I did not. Okay. Great man. He got me started in the business in 1984. Miss him dearly. Let's show the next picture. Now, this is Mr. Moore and Miss Moore, Della. Now, you did know Della. And you even did Della's books there after Mr. Moore passed away, correct? I did. She was a real joy. Yeah, and they were so much fun, but they love to go out to eat. You know me and Susan, we love to go out. And they would go to nice places. I mean, that was always interesting. One of their favorite places was a place in Atlanta called the Peasant Uptown. Have you heard me talk about this place? No. In the Buckhead area? Yeah, it, it's a, is there an article, did that thing close down? Well, at the time, yeah, it was like fine dining at its best. Mr. Moore, anytime they're going to Florida, he always stopped at the Peasant Uptown. And I got to eat there with him once, Susan and I. 
And he said, let's show, we found the best waiter we could. I don't know if that was the guy at the Peasant Uptown. He doesn't look too bad, though, does he, Heather? <laughs> anyway, but the, the waiters at the Peasant Uptown, when they'd come out and take your order, Mr. Moore was always so impressed. He was very analytical, very smart man. They'd go around the table, look at all four of us, wouldn't take notes, nothing, ask what you wanted. And, of course, a pretty involved menu. You'd spout it off. They'd nod. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And go back to the kitchen. It's like, there's no way they're going to get this right. Come back. And every time it was perfect. It was incredible. Now, in your planning, folks, you can't do that. That's the whole problem. You're trying to think of all this in your head. That's why we're encouraging people to write everything down. But the waiters at Peasant Uptown didn't have to write everything down. Now, the reason I'm telling you the story, once I was meeting with Mr. Moore at the office. Don't put this quote up yet, Derek. It's a doozy. So we were at the office, and I'd only been there a year or two. And he was a pretty stern man, pretty frank. And I'm sitting there looking at him, and he's barking out orders, and I'm nodding. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he looked at me. And then he responded this way. Who do you think you are? One of those servers of the peasant uptown? Get a paper and pen and write this down. And I'm scurrying around trying to write it down. Well, his point was, if it's not written down, you're going to forget it. So, folks, that's the point. If things are not written down in writing, you're going to have a mess on your hands. We see it time and time again. So what I thought I would do in the remaining time since I have you both here is talk about a couple of the main things we do for our planning clients in the area of RMDs, required minimum distributions, and Roth conversions. So I would like to kind of turn it over to Leanne briefly and just tell people, first of all, what an RMD is, what the new age requirement is, and then our responsibility and what we try to do for our clients and making sure we optimize those RMDs. Okay, Tony, the RMD is the required minimum distribution, and that's what the government requires everyone um, starting at the age of 72 with a qualified account must take a distribution that is calculated based on their the IRS figures that are provided, um, and that has to be taken each year. Now, what we do uh, in our office is um, check with each client's portfolio, make sure that we cover all of the qualified accounts they may have, and calculate their RMD total across those accounts for the year and make sure that they get processed correctly. And that's a, that's a tremendous job that you're doing, Leanne, in the office. And then back to the planning aspects, though, sometimes, Heather, we're encouraging people. Most people are just taught by the financial world, don't worry about it, just wait till 72, put it off. Why would you want to pay the taxes now? Kind of tell the, our twist on that a little bit. Maybe it's the live well, die broke philosophy, but I think it makes more sense why we encourage people sometimes to get ahead of those RMDs. Well, the tax tumor is never going away, so there's that. Um, a lot of times we'll build it out into a strategy, maybe start paying down some of those qualified accounts the early stages Prior of retirement. Prior to 72. Correct. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, not every time, depends, you know, situational specific, but we might be able to delay their Social Security longer mm -hmm. by paying those down. So what we're doing, hopefully paying down at a lower tax rate if we think tax, taxes are going up in the future anyway, and then also securing a higher lifetime benefit through Social Security. That's a great example. And then in, and then kind of our remaining time, I'd say probably the biggest buzzword right now, and I, I think it is kind of a buzzword because everybody wants to save on taxes, right? Is something called a Roth conversion. Now, folks, we do Roth conversions, but uh, the Roth conversion, you have to be careful. So, Leanne, uh, go ahead and define what a Roth conversion is. And in our practice, I guess to share with our viewing audience, what, what would you say are the ideal candidates in most cases to consider a Roth conversion? So define what it is, and then who would you say are the best candidates for one? Well, in simple terms, a Roth conversion is taking all or a portion of a qualified account converting it, which would mean we're going to pay the taxes on it now while we assume that tax rates are going to be lower, and then that will go into a Roth account, which will grow tax-free for life. Um, Roth conversions are not for everyone. Uh, it's very case-specific, and so we take a lot of information into account before we ever uh, encourage a client to uh, do a Roth conversion. Mm -hmm. Very good. Any, any thoughts from you from a planning standpoint on Roth conversions and when we look at them and execute them and think, well, this was smart. And then other times we've even done some Roth conversions like, no, nah, don't know if that was maybe the best planning uh, aspect of, of all. So I think it speaks to the importance of having an advisor before you implement anything like that. Uh, Roth conversions can have trickle down effects on if you're already taking Social Security, um, that could make your Social Security more taxable. 
if you're not taking Social Security yet and you're within two years of starting Medicare, that could affect your future Medicare premiums. That's right. Good point. So there's a lot to kind of take into consideration with that. You want to make sure you have enough cash on hand to pay the taxes so you're not paying it out of the Roth account itself. Uh, that way you're maximizing that tax-free growth. So it's really not like, oh, hey, great idea. I'm going to do a Roth conversion and go into it blindly. You've really got to look at the whole situation. And then the final thing I wanted to cover in our time remaining, uh, as you know, folks, we do a lot of annuity work, although we really are half of our business last year. We figured that out. I think in 2021, we did about 57 million of new money that went into our Schwab platform. Ironically, about 57 million that went into annuities. I thought that was ironic with our split IRA concept. It's about half and half. But I think these annuities are a wonderful tool, and a lot of people like them. Leanne, you may see this, but when we can kick on that mailbox money, especially when they're approaching 72 and know that more than likely that mailbox money is always going to cover that RMD. Kind of speak to that and where we see annuities playing a role in the tax planning aspect of our practice. Well, we're starting to utilize that uh, mailbox money more and more to cover those RMDs. And that also just gives the client peace of mind that they know they don't have to worry about whether they're going to get dinged or not for missing that RMD. That mailbox money is going to come every year. Yeah. So folks, in closing, what I would say right now, if you're, you're sitting there listening to all this going, gosh, I can't believe the amount of work you all go into trying to do this planning and these written game plans. What I would encourage you to do is right now log on to TonyWalkerFinancial.com, TonyWalkerFinancial.com. Click on that Let's Get Started. There's no cost or obligation to meet. We'd be happy to look at your situation in person, again, at no cost or obligation. Or if you like, just simply call the toll-free number on your screen. Well, what does the Bible have to say about all this? I'm going to let you young ladies get on back to Bowling Green. When I come back, I'm going to share some interesting verses of Scripture about why the written Word is so important for you and I moving forward. Good stuff coming your way. And as you all skedaddle, I'm going to get me a cup of coffee. Be right back. My name is Dina Vuturo. I have been retired for 12 years after 36 years of government service. I joined the United States Air Force and traveled the world for seven years as an intelligence officer. After I got out of the service, I started to work at the United States Postal Service where I spent the rest of my career. And then in 2009, I retired. Retirement has been the happiest time of my life because I can now do the things that I have enjoyed all my life but never had time. Well, um, I have always loved the arts. I saw my first theatrical performance when I was 13 years old and have been in love with the arts since then. So I thought, hmm, I'm going to volunteer at the Kentucky Center for the Arts and see all the wonderful shows that they put on down there. The second thing I'm passionate about is animals. So I saw a notice in the paper to sign up to be a volunteer teacher called a docent at the Louisville Zoo. When you retire, be selfish. Do the things that make you happy. Don't just think about what you can do for your relatives, or your grandchildren, think about something that you have always wanted to do and then go do it. You can only babysit your grandchildren for a certain amount of time. And then you have to think about the things that make you happy. So find something you're passionate about. It might be volunteering at a local animal shelter. It might be being a volunteer at the Kentucky Center for the Arts. But find something that you're really passionate about and then go for it. These last 12 years, I can honestly say, have been the happiest of my life because I've been able to pursue the things that I am passionate about. So I encourage everyone, make a plan. Go out and have fun. You have a lot of life left to live. Wondering how much money you'll need to retire? Probably a lot less than you think. 
I'm retirement specialist Tony Walker, and for the past 36 years, I've helped thousands of savers determine when to retire and how much money they'll need in retirement, and I can help you too. To meet in person at no cost or obligation, let me invite you to log on right now to TonyWalkerFinancial.com or call the toll-free number on your screen. We look forward to talking with you soon. Over the past several weeks, our theme has focused on this very important yet sometimes daunting task of what to tell loved ones before you die, and more specifically, why putting your thoughts in writing is so very important to them. Yet, as easy as it sounds just to sit down and organize your affairs and put those wishes in writing, it's not. But the good news, all it takes is the will to do it. Just the other day, I had in my office a widowed client who, as in her second half of life, quite frankly, was very concerned that her children would not know what to do with her assets upon her death. So she and her three children and three spouses of her children came in to meet with me. It was a very productive meeting and one that reminds me of what the Bible says about getting your affairs in order before it's too late. Let's take a look at Luke 14, 28 and 29, where Jesus says, which of you wishing to build a tower does not first sit down and count the cost to see if he has the resources to complete it. Verse 29 says, Otherwise, if he lays the foundation and is unable to finish the work, everyone who sees it will ridicule him. Moral to the story, assuming you're a responsible adult who loves your family and doesn't want to leave a mess behind, why not get your affairs in writing and communicate them to your loved ones now while you still got your senses? Why don't you sit down today and begin to organize your thoughts and put them in writing as to what you want to happen after you die and exactly where your most important documents and investments, insurance policies, etc. are located so that your loved ones will know what the heck is going on when that fateful event occurs. But Tony, you say, I don't know where to start. Can you guys help me get started? Uh, absolutely, we can help. In fact, besides meeting with us in person, we recently created a very handy and easy to use guide called the Conversation Starter, and it's yours absolutely free. To download a free copy, simply go to TonyWalkerFinancial.com and click on the download section where you can find the free, easy to understand conversation starter. So what else can we do to get started? Well, I'm glad you asked. You see, at Tony Walker Financial, for more than 37 years, I've made it my life's work to help people get organized so that they can use and enjoy and protect more of their money, and we want to help you too. So if you'd like to meet with me in person, either by phone or if it warrants a personal appointment at either our Bowling Green, Louisville, or Lexington, Kentucky offices, just go to TonyWalkerFinancial.com, click on the Let's Get Started button, or of course, you can call the toll-free number on your screen. Well, we have certainly enjoyed being with you this week. Next week, we've got an interesting show in line. In fact, what I'm going to be doing is going through the split IRA concept and the three key components you're going to want to know about and why your 401k is a must to go into this split IRA concept. But you remember, between now and then, if all else fails, you be worry-free. Make it a good one.